Hello. Oh my gosh, I didn't see you there. Welcome back to the L1 show with friends. Today is June 7th and we're doing business and social stories. What a coincidence that you showed up just as we were going to sit and talk to an empty room. Wow. Uh, yeah. Stare right at the camera. That happened to be on. That's not a camera because we're talking through their screens directly oh, to them. Of course. Yes. Now, uh, the collapse section, I left it in this week, but there wasn't a lot. Good news. Yeah. Didn't seem like there was a ton of collapse this week. We will start with this one though. The FTX snowball continues to roll and take out some unfortunate people. Te we were just debating how to pronounce Temasek. Temasek cut salary of staff responsible for its failed FTX investment. So they admit that these guys couldn't have known because FTX lied about it, all that stuff. There was fraud happening. But on the other hand, they were like, you made a dumb decision. Mm. So you're gonna, you're gonna take a pay cut. Now I'm gonna fire you. But you're going to have to be a little more careful in the future. Do you think they're just trying to get them to quit? Like mm, Maybe. They lost. Uh, they wrote everything off. $275 million. So they took it as a loss. I wonder if that means that they're not allowed to be in line if repayments happen. It's a lot of money. That's at least $2. And uh, this one is just tangentially related to technology, obviously. But it is interesting that you know, we kind of talk a lot about phone sales, PC sales, stuff like that. But what about further down the retail chain into like the middle optional stuff? Macy's and Costco sound a warning about the economy. So Macy's in particular mentioned that like consumer home goods, so like blenders, mm -hmm. mixers, all that kind of stuff. I guess that's technically technology. Like all right. that, all those kind of sales are going down. Whereas Walmart is picking up a little bit. Because people are spending money on the basics only. All right, food. Like just, yeah, they were like food, clothing. Yeah, keep or even clothing. People are slowing down on the clothing. Yeah, which is probably ultimately a good thing. But I hate. Oh my goodness! Why? Oh, it's this, so big. Why is it so zoomed in? Well, this is I. This is like how I read the internet. This must be the Massive. break point. That's a weird break point for Twitter, huh? It goes up to mobile. I hate to use Twitter as a story. Right, yeah, because it's not really meant for long form. I did. I couldn't find anybody else talking about this, though, and it is very interesting. Uh, this guy criticized Amazon's policies in a blog post and then was interviewed on various news outlets about it, his experiences, and Amazon basically sued him into oblivion. So what he's talking about is if you sell on Amazon, you can't sell your product anywhere else for cheaper. Amazon must be your cheapest vendor. So he pointed that out. Uh, he got in, you know, he went to court a couple of times as a witness. He's not suing them. He just went in as a witness. I don't know what that picture is about. He went on some podcasts. Um, and he just, he got interviewed by places who were like, hey, we want to talk about your story. Congress. Yeah. The biggest interview. And uh, California responded and went after Amazon. And so Amazon was very unhappy about that. So he is, after all, an Amazon seller. And they, they decided to sue him. And now they've demanded an insane amount of stuff here. Just documentation. They're like, you need to document everything. So he's like, I submitted all of my documentation and they're saying it's not enough. And they're dragging so, it out. I think they said till 2026. Yeah, this is the schedule of what he has to deliver. And yes, it goes to July 2026. And uh, he points out that he just can't do it. They deposed him for two days and they were like, no, we, I think we have to depose you more. He gave them tons of stuff and uh, they said, no, that's not enough. You will give us more. Here he is showing off some, like the costs of everything. Whew. And uh, That would bankrupt you just trying to pay for the legal cost. Yeah, that's what you get if you speak out about Amazon. Uh, a lot of people in this thread were saying, hey, you might be able to find a lawyer for pro bono, but no posts from lawyers. Well, a lawyer from pro bono would want to do it to be in the courtroom. I don't think any law firm wants to do the paperwork. Right. I mean, Which we have a story about later. Yeah. Moving on to hardware. Of course, this is Computex. So we have a lot of new announcements from all of the various hardware teams. Let's talk. Let's start with ARM. ARM announces the Cortex X4 for a 2024 plus a 14 core M2 fighter. I don't know if they're going to be able to take on the M2. Also, we must point out that ARM does not make these chips. They design them. They wait for somebody else to make them. And whoever makes them ultimately also tends to change them a little bit. Mm. 
But they're doing the chiplet thing, and then they have one that's like, hey guys, this might be crazy, but look how powerful this arm chip could be. It's just like this, you know, massive thing. Will anybody pick that up? We don't know. Considering spending trends everywhere, maybe not. Yeah, maybe just go with what you know. Oh, look, Forbes is doing the mobile thing too. Ah, something, I've, yeah, it's like a very narrow. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It's pretty aggressive. Anyway, uh, Intel, we're waiting for Meteor Lake. Will they give it to us? No, they will not. They have announced the 14th generation, and it is not that. Intel's 14th gen processor is confirmed as Raptor Lake refresh, question mark. Yep. The author of this article was not impressed with their Computex showing. They're making them faster. They're increasing the power a little bit. They said it might get over 6 gigahertz for the clock, but they will not be the new stuff. The big question is, will they let us keep the socket for the next generation, or will they do something horrible and change that as well? I can't get over the naming scheme for any hardware, really, but like Raptor Lake to Meteor Lake. Are they implying that they're going to go extinct? <laughs> they're also doing the changing the core names. Remember that? And so there's a question of, well, are you going to do that now? Because you're just releasing the same chips again. Or are you going to wait till the Meteor Lake to do that whole All rebrand? the change. It's so confusing. And Intel, you know, they are constantly... What you constantly hear from Intel is like, yeah, okay, that was bad. Yeah, that's that. We but this just, time. But we got some good <laughs> stuff coming up. Just you wait. And this one might actually be enough to get them some uh, advantages. Intel says AI is overwhelming CPUs, GPUs, even clouds. So all Meteor Lakes will get a VPU. What does VPU stand for? Well, they didn't tell us. I think they said visual. But they apparently it wasn't mentioned. Intel didn't explain what the acronym meant. Yeah, but it's for AI. Right. So they're saying that there's so much AI workload right now that they think every chip should have a specific VPU for handling AI workloads. Is that just them kind of jumping on the AI? I think well, I think AI is here to stay. Well, right, but it feels a little like, no, guys, we're trying, we're be relevant. Maybe maybe I'm just reading into the bias of the authors of the articles, but <laughs> I think every chip maker will lean. I mean, look what Nvidia is. Doing. Yeah, yeah, we have a story about that. Remember the power connector gate, where the. Uh, I think it was the 4090. Oh, yeah, it would melt. Was roasting those power connectors. Yeah. Some people blamed the power connectors. Some people blamed the video card makers. Some people blamed the PC builders for not seating them in there. It is kind of ridiculous because PC cases often make you pinch yeah. the connector because they're so narrow and these cards are so mammoth. So Asus has a new idea. Asus shows off concept GeForce RTX 40 graphics card without power connectors uses proprietary slot. Now, Kirstie, you might appreciate this because this is for people who are very uh, anal about their cable management. Mm, so uh, I don't know if I'd classify myself as one of those because by the time I'm managing the cables, I'm like exhausted from screwing in all the little screws and I'm like, I'm done. I don't care anymore. <laughs> but look at this board. What's missing? Mm -hmm. Any kind of connector. Mm -hmm. They're all on the back. Now, of course, once you put the video card in there, that cable has to be run around the front, right? It's got to get to the right. video card. So now they're introducing this new form factor where power will be delivered directly through the PCI Express. Was there a picture of like what it looked like all put together? Like in a case? Uh, I don't remember. Well, this is the back of the board. That's where all the connectors are. There you go. Hey. That do be looking sleek though. Now you just got to get rid of the cooler. For the liquid. How are you going to do that? It's interesting. I wouldn't hate that, but it does suck that what if every motherboard company does a different one? Yeah, proprietary. Like, I mean, as soon as you see that in the headline, it's like, ooh. Yeah. Plus, I imagine some people are going to buy the wrong card. Mm. And they're going to be like, oh, I got oh, to go buy a motherboard now. Yeah. Maybe they'll only sell them bundled. And the maybe some of the biggest announcements that we're seeing, and this wasn't necessarily from Computex, but this was timed because the Apple conference was coming the next day. 
So the Zuck slid one in. Mm. Meta announces its Quest VR headset, which will cost $499.99. That price is very much taking into account the current economic situation, right? Because you would think they would go six, seven hundred. I mean, maybe. I still think that's pretty high. Like for something that I'm probably not going to use that often. So there it is. Who has the money for something? This like guy this right, right here. Now? Yeah. <laughs> this guy in his <laughs> unbranded T-shirt. New controllers. Here's a an exploded view of it. It's got all these new sensors on the front. There's a motion sen- or a depth sensor and two cameras. Going to be compatible with all the old Quest stuff. Just have to have a Facebook account. Browse the marketplace no. virtually in the in the metaverse. And uh, more speculation about the developer conference and what we will see in terms of Apple's new stuff. New desktop Macs with M2 Ultra and M2 Max chips could see WWDC debut. Such a tiny headline. I have to like... Mac Rumors has a weird... It's a weird website, yeah. It's a little old school. So, yeah, new Macs. Uh, Also, yeah, I wasn't that excited. M2 Ultra, also, every time I read that, I always autocorrect it to MK Ultra. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, that's not right. I'm not talking about that. Every time you turn it on, a little pin injects LSD into your fingertip. Mm. (laughs) It's a very expensive feature, but Apple thought it was worth it. And NVIDIA, boy, are they having a wonderful year. They've made a lot of money, and now they're joining a very exclusive club. NVIDIA briefly joins $1 trillion Valuation Club. What was their stock was, price? What had gone up since the beginning of the year? Wasn't it like... 400 and something? Yeah. There was a percentage in one of these articles. I imagine they'll split that soon. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if they... It didn't settle at the end of the day, but intraday, it touched $1 trillion. Even if it didn't, I'm sure it did later or is going to because yeah. what's going to stop it? And uh, the big thing right now, the reason NVIDIA is drowning in money is because everyone wants GPU power to run their AI and there's only so much to go around. So Microsoft and NVIDIA have come up with a new way to give people their favorite new drug. Microsoft signs deal for AI computing power with NVIDIA-backed CoreWeave that could be worth billions. So this is basically cloud compute for your AI projects. I went to their website. Their website is like a cacophony of colors. How would you rate it? I mean, like the website was fine. It was functional. It explained what they did just fine. But like, I just noticed that like none of the brand colors were cohesive. And I was like, why don't they pick colors from the logo? Maybe they let the AI do it. Maybe. I don't know. (laughs) I would think the AI might do a better job, but... And uh, if you are currently drinking malt liquor, you're going to want to pour a little out Mm. for this workhorse that changed entertainment. The original Chromecast hits end of life after a decade of service. I had a Chromecast for a while, many years ago. The highest selling Google product ever in terms of hardware. Yeah, I could see that. Um, The current version now has the OS on it. And these were just blind. Yeah, you literally controlled it through your phone. Yeah, and so... They didn't like that. They've moved on to a new version with tracking. Yeah. Uh-huh. Apparently they'll still work. Like if you have one of the very first ones, they just don't do security updates anymore. So not great. Now we talked about, of course, the Apple AirTag and all the horrors that come along with that. And then Google was like, hey, we're doing ours too. And we have an even bigger footprint for our network. So you can track people even more easily. And these guys said, you guys aren't thinking outside the box here enough. We need to cover the globe in tracking. Hubble Network wants to connect a billion devices with space-based Bluetooth network. So I I saw the name Hubble, and I was like, oh, that's a little stolen legitimacy, isn't it, to call your company Hubble? What about calling your company Tesla? Uh, But Hubble implies that you have some sort of connection with, like, the the Hubble telescope. Well, no, the Hubble telescope's named after a dude. I know, but... This is a great picture. So this is a good picture. Uh, it's interesting. However, Nikkei Asia really, really no detail. didn't get, oh, you know what? That's funny. There's a paywall, but really they didn't block they didn't much talk, of the article. There's yeah. two paragraphs here. Canon develops quantum dot OLED materials without rare metals. I think they said they were using lead in this article. Um, it's 
But no, it's, there's another name for whatever they're using, I think. I thought it was lead. But uh, could be wrong. China controls all of that. And so they're a little worried about, you know, the whole China situation. Yeah. So they've decided to come up with a way to do it without that. But we got no details about it. No, no. There is detail, I think, in this article. It was something else, the rare earth metal. And I Indian. think they switched to lead. It's Indian. Is that the name? That's oh, the you're name. saying they're doing lead now. Yes. Oh, okay. And because they were going to take it from old electronic parts. They're like, we can just take scraps and then reuse it. Well, that's a good feature. Yeah. I thought that was positive. And the, this has just been going on and on. We see little back and forth punches in this, but I'm so tired of it. So is the judge. But here it is. Sonos wins 32.5 million patent infringement victory over Google. But they threw out another 90 million right. argument. And the judge had some, I think it's the very end paragraph here. The judge was like, this is just patent trolling of the worst kind. And he also apparently during the, like when they were doing the hearing stuff, he had to remind the jury to like wake up because it was so full of technical oh, jargon. Can you imagine? Yeah. He's like, never bring something like this to me again. Well, the, we missed this one last week. It's a little bit of an older story, but it's, I think uh, I mentioned it, but we yeah we didn't have a story about it's it. It's interesting. I don't know. I'm not necessarily against it. I, I mean, if you're in the situation where you need this, you probably don't care about the risks. But there is the the future looks pretty dark if this were to be part of everybody's life. Right. Elon Musk's brain implant company Neuralink announces FDA approval of inhuman clinical study. The most amazing thing that came out of this press release. Now this is Elon Musk. How many times has he said these crazy things and never followed up? Right. I mean, he's, that's his MO. But he claims that it's very minimally invasive. We're eventually all going to want one, and he's definitely going to get one. Yeah, he said he would definitely get one. And I was like, what, so you can beam ads straight to my head? No, thank you. Unsubscribe. And HP, my goodness, I think we might have talked about this before, but we yeah. get more details here on exactly... <laughs> How this happens and why people are falling for it. HP has found an exciting new way to DRM your printer! Exclamation point. So the way they're getting around the obvious horror that this is and that FTC should be like, you know, uh, the FTC should be firmly lodged in their lower colon at this point mm. based on this. But they're doing nothing. And why is that? It's because you agree to it. So when you buy one of these desk jets, which is $85, you it's get, the most popular printer on Amazon, apparently. You get uh, six months of free ink. Oh, here you go. Here you go. Six months of ink, extended warranty, and advanced smart app features. Ooh. One of those features is to reject all ink cartridges, including official HP cartridges, if you cancel your subscription. They also point out that... Um, yeah, here's the part about if you cancel, you lose everything. But they reserve the right to uh, change your firmware. Oh, here we go. Remote monitoring. You must always be connected to the internet to print. Uh, disabling the cartridges or disabling the subscription turns off the cartridges. We talked about that. And there could be additional fees at HP's sole discretion. Oh, well, it's the FTC right now. <laughs> Not on our watch. But HP isn't here. Uh. What a terrible thing. We really need a printer company to come along and save us from this. Uh, Elon Musk should do that. He should start a printer company. Who prints still? I have to print maybe <laughs> once or twice a year. Yeah. I, it's like for like tax documents. I don't, I will never buy a printer because I don't do it enough and I have access to printers here, but it's, it's just so, so annoying that there is no option. Right. right. Like what printer could I buy? That's not going to be some insane driver nightmare. Yeah, it's just I just want something that I can print my documents once or twice a year. That's it. Maybe we should install printers in our cars because obviously modern cars would be able to run that. And apparently we're all going to be driving one of these soon. Tesla Model Y is now the world's best selling car. First EV to do so. Electric, the website that are electric. They're so smug in this article. They're, they have yeah. the smug goat meme energy where they're like, 
I use them, them a lot because there's no paywall and they do a lot of coverage yeah. for this type of thing. But yeah, they're, they're annoying. They're very, very smug in this particular. Like, we knew this would happen. Uh, they believe that a lot of this, and I think it's probably true, comes from the fact that Musk saw what was happening in the economy and he slashed the prices for these cars. Right. So that was a smart move. Volume rather than margin. Not a bad idea. And... You know, it's fun. We talk about NVIDIA is now a trillion dollar company and the actual tech gods are like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. Oh, well, you, you made a trillion dollars. Yeah. One aspect of our business did that. Apple touts 1.1 trillion in app store commerce in 2022 with a 104 billion in digital sales. Those are the numbers that like I can't even fathom. It's astonishing. Yeah. They also break it down. This is very interesting where they break it down into like food delivery apps and stuff like that, grocery apps and so forth, and showing what people spend year over year on that. All the extra fees that have to go into these numbers is just insane. Crazy. Yeah, I'm sitting here just like, I, so much money for, do you get that much value, I guess? Maybe. For what? For like the, the, app, the store? app store, yeah. Nah, most developers don't make money on the app store. Right. Well, I'm saying like even just as a user, like there's, I've never been like, I should download an app for this, like hardly ever. Oh, I actively try to avoid it. Yeah, same. You've been getting the emails from the vet. Yes. <laughs> download our app. And they always, they put the, the pet's name in the headline to catch you. It's like, oh, Toast and Crouton need this new app. Well, it's uh, so I actually scheduled like, through my vet's website, like, hey, I need a, to do a, a checkup for Rue and get her shots and stuff, rethink. And then now I'm getting an email like every week. They're like, please sign up for the app. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. that I was also in a regular hospital recently. Like I wasn't in the hospital, but I was visiting. Uh, every wall has an advertisement for their health app that they want you to get. It's crazy. If you want to stay away from the tracking and all that nonsense, don't download those apps. That's a terrible idea. And also, you might want to use a privacy browser like Brave. I've been trying to get more into using Brave. Uh, I could have sworn Brave got bought out, but I looked it up and I was like, oh, no, I misremembered that. I think they're still okay. They also have their own search, which you can use, which obviously doesn't track you, kind of like DuckDuckGo, that type of thing. And now they've added a new feature. Brave releases its search API. Trying to get in on the AI wave. They, uh... You can use, I think it's 2000 per month for free, and then it's $5 per 10,000 requests. Yeah, if you're going to build an AI, you could use Brave. And here is, a, my God, the hypocrisy here. Mm -hmm. But this kind of makes you wonder if the whole FTX thing wasn't somewhat orchestrated. They might have used him as a useful idiot in order to destroy trust, which would then lead to... Wall Street firms to take on Binance, Coinbase, and other crypto-friendly exchanges. I can't remember. What are the names of the banks who are like, yeah, yeah, we'll do this. All the they big listed, ones. Yeah, they listed a bunch in here. Um, I remember Charles Schwab was one. It's at the very top, I think. Yeah, there you go. Standard Chartered, Nomura, Charles Schwab. Schwab. So, yeah, basically they're like, oh, hey, don't trust the crypto exchanges, but you still want to play with crypto? Maybe we'll help you with that. Mm. We'll come up with an exchange. And then you don't have to trust these decentralized people. They're pirates. Come back to the warm embrace of surveillance. <laughs> then they'll merge you right into the central bank digital currency, I'm sure. Seamless. Yeah. Uh, RAR BG is a word that I've seen sometimes. Uh, maybe one or two entries on the magical hard drive mm. might have contained that in the uh the folder name but no more iconic torrent site rar rar gb shuts down all content releases stop i had a friend who like we were playing a game one night and uh he's like oh i was a little down this morning oh like, we're like what, what happened and he was like my favorite torrent site got shut down like he was genuinely upset about it you associate with these peer-to-peer -peer plebs never i would never i that was a made-up story it just occurred to me do you think that's a play on Ruth Bader Ginsburg? No, it's R R G B, right? R R R B -R -R -G. I don't know. the The reason they're shutting down, though, it's like 
you thought, oh, maybe it's like hosting costs or the government's on their ass, but it's, it's actually like a bunch of depressing reasons. Like half our staff got really sick. Half our staff are fighting in the war in Ukraine. On both sides. Yeah. They have like, both oh. Russian and Ukrainian hackers. Yeah. <laughs> who are fighting it's one dark. another. dark. That's like the civil war, <laughs> but for piracy. Sad. Sad to see him go. And uh, YouTube famously took away the dislike button and people didn't like that. Uh, uh, but now this person is trying to capitalize on that. I don't think this is going to take off. Maybe, I don't think people are going to want to click away and waste their time with this. YouTube removed dislike counts so this guy made Rotten Tomatoes for YouTube videos. I, the thing is, yeah, it re requires users to input information. And I don't think, unless you're a large channel, you're probably not going to get that kind of traffic. And there's no click through, right? Because YouTube's not going to send you to the site. You're going right. to have to know to go here, search for the channel, register an account. I just don't see it would be that. better if it was like a browser plugin. But even so, even browser plugins are kind of like niche, I think, for like I think most there, users. Aren't there plugins that reveal? Because I think somewhere in the source, there might be that dislike count somewhere. Yeah, there is one. Uh, I I installed that one yesterday. I think I sent it to you guys where it's like fixes the search results in YouTube. So it removes like shorts. It removes all the advertising. It removes like random suggested content. And it's like, wow, there was so much crap in search before that I didn't even register anymore because I would just scroll past it. And now my search results are just what I asked for. And I'm so tired of hearing about YouTube TV. My God, mm. it's never going to happen, YouTube. Stop trying to make it happen. Although I think they're making a ton of money on it. Yeah. Well, uh, Alexa, we've learned last week that Alexa is getting a much needed makeover. And it seems that all things that were past Alexa will now be memory hold. That never happened. Amazon is discontinuing Alexa's celebrity voices, even if you paid for them. The most famous one, I think, was Samuel L. Jackson. I think, uh, what's her face? The girl from SNL. McCarthy. Melissa, Melissa McCarthy, Shaquille O'Neal, and Samuel L. Jackson, yeah. I guess, were the top three. Some of these you paid up to $5 for. You can get it back, but not automatically. You have to complain. But you can't keep it, no matter what. Yeah, you just get your money back. And the Indian streaming world, of course, we've been talking about India. They are blowing up. They're becoming a middle-class economy on the backs of all these tech companies that are worried about China and the geopolitical risks and their streaming services are certainly reaping the benefit of this. Reliance's Geo Cinema breaks world record with free cricket streaming. What's amazing is that Disney has their own streaming service here. It's called Hotstar. Hotstar decided to broadcast another cricket tournament a few years ago for free and they broke the record. Then they started charging for it. Mm. Well, they lured you in. So these guys were like, oh, that's a good plan. We'll do the same thing and uh, we'll break your record. They haven't started charging yet, but that's, that'll much. probably be the follow up next week. That's coming. Oh, there we go. This is a horrific idea. Yeah, I don't know I, who I, I kind of don't like either side here. I'm not sure who to root for. Well, I'll tell you who's not going to like this insurance companies. Yeah, I didn't think about that. There's going to be a little kid that drowns. There and, was one in the story. Oh, really? I yeah. missed that. In one suburb, a backlash against homeowners renting out private pools. There's an app, I think it's called Swimly, something like that. And you can rent out your pool much like you would an Airbnb. Well, they really missed the boat call, not calling it Swimmingly. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's I think it's Swimly. I, I might have that wrong. But yeah, um, you rent out your pool and some people in various towns are complaining about it now because they're like, it's turning our usually quiet street into a very loud commercial zone. Wouldn't you need a lifeguard? I guess not. Uh, they're charging too. It said usually anywhere from 25 to a hundred dollars an hour, which is why people are doing it. Obviously. Yeah. That's that insane. Easy money. Uh, a lot of the people, there's a lot of obviously rich people who are getting a little NIMBY panic here because uh. they're looking out over their manicured lawn and they're seeing urban children lining up. Yeah, see, that's, that's what's like. I don't really <laughs> like the people who are, you know, scoffing because they're getting the HOA involved, but I also like can kind of see why you might not want to have a bunch of randos in your pool, especially when there was already a case of someone drowning in the pool. Well, not just that, but they would talk about how because of the scheduling, you get your hour and then the next hour comes in. So people were queuing up on the street with their like floaties and yeah, the swimsuits yeah. and stuff. And while they're bored, maybe they make a little trouble. Uh. So 
Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really root for either side here. It seems like our public pools could maybe just be better. There's a, you know, there's a freedom argument there. It's yeah. your pool. You should be able to let people use it if you want to. But there are a lot of extra things to worry about there. Yeah. And uh, Mozilla is usually one of the better companies in terms of, uh, you know, horrible ad practices and privacy and stuff like that. And relatively better. Obviously. Yeah, I, I use Firefox, but this is scummy of them. We're calling, we're comparing them to Google. Um, right. You know, so it's a low bar, but still, this is awful. Mozilla stops Firefox full screen VPN ads after user outrage. What a tone deaf thing to do. So it would lock. You couldn't just click away from this like most web design for an overlay. You have to actually interact and click the no, I don't want it button. And uh, they remove this optionally, but you could go in and change a config setting if you wanted to make sure this never VPN promo enabled. Ugh. Uh, the darkness of the poor engineer who had to add that. Maybe I'll try Brave. <laughs> And CAPTCHAs are interesting technology because in order to stay ahead of anti-CAPTCHAs, they have to constantly be evolving. And one of the ways that they evolve, as we've learned about AI, they go out to the internet and they find stuff and they learn about it. And that stuff might not be real. CAPTCHA is asking users to identify objects that don't exist. Please click each image containing a Yoko. And then the results that they give, this is obviously AI generated. Yeah, it's like some sort of weird Rubik's Cube, but it's not actually a Rubik's Cube. And then they also gave them puzzles to do the puzzle, but these puzzles also appear to be AI generated. And there's some yo-yos in here too. I heard, I don't think we included a story about this. This happened a couple weeks ago, but I think HBO Max has similar issues now where if you try to log in, you get weird captures like this. Yeah, this is uh, H capture, which is a copy of or fork of reCAPTCHA without the spying, mm. supposedly. I guess they're cutting some corners. <laughs> <laughs> Identify the Yoko. Uh, and here's another uh, where they wanted you to find just obviously AI generated faces. <sighs> Wild. Yeah. You're just not going to be able to log in. I. That's the thing I tell clients a lot. They're like, oh, you know, I want to have a, a form or something. And then it's like, then it becomes a game of how do I beat the bots from constantly filling out your form? And now even CAPTCHAs aren't reliable. No, That's, a, you're never going to win. It's a darkness. It's awful. And the AI is only going to get better at that. Yeah. Uh, we have, uh, this argument has played out already in Australia and some other places. The news people want social media companies to pay them for the content. Social media companies don't want to do that. It's a standoff. Meta threatens to yank news content from California over payments bill. So California has ruled that they can do that. And so Meta's saying, well, maybe we just don't have news. You know what? People will share this organically. Mm. We don't need a news tab, which is absolutely how it should work. Yeah. Is, is, is that a problem? Like, <laughs> And we know that what Meta does is that they advertise. That is their business model. How do they get? so good at it while well, they learn everything about you and they exploit that that is illegal in some parts of the world meta offers to limit use of ad data to address uk competition concerns i think this was specifically related to the marketplace right they were looking at by what you hesitate on what you click on well if you're looking for a certain thing on the marketplace they, they use shoes as an example then that immediately goes into yours like interested in shoes mm. and you start getting shoes but the uk is saying no, your service should not have anything to do with the advertising. If you're going to use the marketplace, it should be totally separate from your stuff. And Meta agrees to that, but only in the UK. California you're probably going to get all over them on that. Yeah. And uh, Instagram, of course, they're out there and they're telling you that's like, hey, you know how you feel like that because you say things that we don't like, no one ever hears it and we just ban you and hide it? Nah, that never happened. Instagram's head says you shouldn't worry about shadow banning, though they, they don't use the word shadow banning. And also they, they don't promise they're not doing it. Yeah. They're still not to worry about they it. They just talk about how they have many different algorithms, not just one, and that there's many ways that they use to self-police. They're also getting ready to launch a new product in competition with Twitter, so definitely a press release kind of vibe. 
you'll never understand this. So stop trying. Yeah. Basically is what he's saying. And we learned recently that Reddit is going to start charging for APIs among all the other companies because Ugh. now we know that AI is going to be exploiting that and there's money to be made from it. But some people had already created business models that relied on it. Reddit's new API pricing could kill its most popular app with a $20 million bill. Apollo is a Reddit reader that everyone is very upset about. I kind of get the impression that Apollo was what you were just talking about with YouTube, where it just pulls out all the garbage right. and serves you Reddit. So obviously Reddit doesn't want that to begin with. Right. There's a couple apps like that. I think there's another one that's like Reddit is fun. I don't have any of these installed, but I've, I've seen a lot of people crying about this online. So this guy did the math. He said even if he kicked off his free users and only had paid users, he still couldn't pay them enough to, to make it work. To cover it, yeah. So that's going away. It's really a bummer for like niche hobby spaces because that's where like if you want to discuss a niche hobby, Reddit is really, really good for that. And Reddit's just getting worse and worse and worse. But it's also probably harder to advertise to you if you're in that space, right? Right. So they don't care. That means we're going to have to go back to the one ring.net for Tolkien discussions. You never should have left. Uh, their forum looks like it's still in the 90s. So you should volunteer. No. To, to rehash it. They like rings of power, no. Oh, wow. Well, you know, you could be a force of good in that uh. community. Here's a CNN story. It's in business, and they left out everything about this story. This is astonishing the way that they just ignore all the facts. I, and I saw headlines for this, but I'll be honest, I didn't see all the details. Twitter's head of trust and safety says she has resigned. Why did she resign? Well, it turns out that there was a documentary. I'm not even going to say the name of it because it's very incendiary. It upset a lot of people. It has to do with some of the hot button issues of the day. And they plan to launch on Twitter. But based on this woman's decisions, their launch was hampered. And it was like the sensitive media and hate speech or whatever. She labeled it with all this stuff and prevented people from seeing it. And he appealed directly to Elon Musk and Elon Musk said, yeah, something's going to change here. What changed is she doesn't work there anymore. So once in a while, Elon Musk hits one for free speech. Not always. Not hardly ever, but. But this time he did. I feel like Twitter's also gotten like all, all websites. I feel like have gotten worse with their algorithms because it's all just about advertising now. It always was. It always was, but like it's just so blatant anymore. Anyway, speaking of advertising, check out our store. Go to Patreon and Floatplane and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>